all these things. And, and then whichever motor is actually there in the factory, that's not the customer's concern. So you may actually be moving motors between different plants or... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, now, you're, uh, now you're coming in. Uh, now I think you're on the level where we are. <laughs> in the yeah. is that this, is, this is on the level we are. We have not realized everything, but this is our vision, uh, where to go. And of course, one of the visions where we want to go, which I haven't showed you, this is of course Terraform Motors as a service, is of course a motor or a drive as a service. But we are not there yet. But how does the big industry feel of getting a product as a service when they have been you, uh, buying the product for 100 years? Mm. So, uh, in SCO so what is the contract there? Have, have they bought it as a service? or? No, they, they have got the sensor as a service, according to this remote assistance uh, This is the sales as a service. They pay a monthly cost, so they are on level three. So they are getting all this as a service, and they are paying a monthly fee for 115 cents a day. Uh, okay, an another question then on SA. So, what uh, week? Uh, mm -hmm. not, or is it? What am I thinking about Popola? The, the new plant they, are, they have built. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, how has it been there? Have you been able to kind of push in a service contract or, or did you try to sell motors as a service or uh, what was the reaction from the customers? Uh, but, uh, this is really the point. This is really the point. We don't really know. Is that we have already talked about, with all about digitalization. We, mm -hmm. Remember now that we have an NDA, so I will be quite open with you. But we haven't offered that product as a service because we feel that the heavy industry is not really ready for that kind of fault uh, for yet. <laughs> but, uh, of course, the, you know, the, the coffee machine is a coffee machine as a service. Yeah. The company cars is company cars as a service. But this is something that are really in the core of their business, in their operation apparat apparatus, yeah. electric mode. So, so, so suddenly when you go from a company car as a service to electrical mode, or something happens. Mm. <laughs> but I think it's difficult to change the mindset around it. It's not... But, but I'm kind of guessing, you know, one thing that maybe David is also talking about with the new plant happening and they're aggressive at least on the paper. You know, we have been collaborating with them a little bit and have been talking with their digital leads in SCA, both on the plant and forestry side. And it seems they want to have like a leading one. And I would imagine that motors can represent like a very important footprint in the mm -hmm. whole operation. It is, it is. As pointed out, motors consume 40% of Swedish total electricity today. But so I was, I was trying to connect the fact that, you know, um, I mean, if a customer sees that they need to digitally transform, and obviously they have a whole line, you know, so they need Metro's product to be all digitalized and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you provide a very critical function that helps them with one kind of digitalization. Yeah. Um, and, and it won't need convergence with others too, but, but maybe... I don't know how they think about it, you know, do they pick on that or does it become too narrow for them? Uh, let, let's say like this, that uh, Opel would like to digitalize yeah, the completely new, new investment. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to keep the same number of uh, maintenance personnel in the factory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, they, they want to increase productivity when they are anyway building something new. You, you understand what I mean? Yeah. But we haven't presented yet product as a service or a spare part as a service because, you know, in a meeting with the customer, if we are talking about everything at the same time, yeah, it's too much. It, it just become a blur out of it. 
So, so you have to kind of feed them step by step. And, and if they would ask us, can you provide our product as a service? We will say, yes, we can. Um, I'm also thinking, Peter, you have... So, in this bigger slide deck, you have multiple value propositions. <laughs> yeah, um, it's uh, 51 slides. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I totally agree that it, it, it's very difficult to take them to the visionary side because, you know, they are on so, so much left side. But mm. uh, we, we, we start with this, what is the goal for digital surveillance? Mm -hmm. Why should they do it? And what, is, what is the value for that? Only that step is a right big step. Yeah. But I'm also thinking slide number five, where you have this gap part. I mean, there are potentially two levels of things that are happening. One is, you know, if you simplify it, uh, one is that on the bottom side of the curve, the technology is maturing to become more information, right? So sensors, data information. So I mean, the digital, let's say, digital maturity in the customer side is increasing uh, to, to make. But then there are a set of actions that can be taken. It can be about, um, as we talked about, sharing of the motors to changing of the motors to find the right motor to change and that's probably different type of value propositions that can be there once you have reached the information level. Uh, yeah, so, so, so we, we, have, we have defined more or less the next question customer we have. It, it, <laughs> you, you know, I made this slide. Uh, I made this slide with this animation Mm -hmm. based on that we, with the sensor, we only solve a part of the problem. Yeah. Because if you have a problem with your production, you will never repair something directly in production. You will exchange it and repair it outside production. Yeah. You, you need to do this. Yes. And can you do it efficiently today? Do you know where your spare parts are? Do you know yes. the condition yes. of spare parts? Do you take any risk by putting a spare part into your production? Does it have all the right attributes? Yes. Like the old motor had. And, and the, the, this is this is the going more or less the whole way. Yeah, you know that when you go to action, you need to have put in a spare part. Yeah. To solve the problem. Uh, yeah, but but uh, we haven't shown this to ma too many customers yet. How has been the reaction to the ones who have seen it? Uh, uh, silence. <laughs> why, why do you think it's the case? Not some kind of shock. <laughs> I guess, do they find it uncomfortable to confess that it is so messy? No, maybe not. Uh, uh, well... Since we have started actually in talking about spare parts with the customer, they open up and say that this is a headache. Ah, uh, okay, good. But so you, you, you know, you know that I know, I know a paper mill here in the uh, mid, mid part of Sweden. They have 6,000 motors in operation. How many motors do you, do you think they have there in the spare parts stock? 6,000, okay, so I mean, if you take at least, I don't know, 10% is maybe very high, probably 2, 3% probably. No, but they have. No, no, they have more. They have okay. 800 motors in Stafford Oh, wow. Yeah, so, so you know, this is an interesting question. Uh, how, how have you been discussing about this, you know, that... AVB would be maintaining the spare part stock. Mm. Like up, up here in Norrbotten, for example, if you had one in Luleå, you could, well, as you say, four, 400 kilometers, you could easily service. Yeah. Uh, have, have you been having those discussions, and how do the customers react? Uh, quite, quite of a shock, because the customer have not
I think this part of the conversation is seems like very interesting. Yeah, and also the part of Bhutan has a highly 